At 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and 7, you'll see the prayer that he's praying. When Solomon dedicated the temple, Solomon said, if your people, uh, you know, if they, if they sin, they drift away from you, even if they are in a foreign land, if they will look toward this temple, if they'll look toward this temple, and I'm saying, you know, Orthodox Jews will still do that, uh, they'll look toward the, uh, to Jerusalem. If they'll look toward this temple in Jerusalem, hear and answer their prayer and obey. And so Jehoshaphat is saying, uh, Lord, and, and God said, by the way, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 13 and 14, if my, well, first of all, he says, if I shut up the heavens, 2 Chronicles 7, 13, if I shut up the heaven that there be no rain, if I command the locusts that they devour the land, and if I send pestilence, Verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I, here from heaven, will forgive their sins and heal their land. And so when you pray the scriptures, and, uh, and again, if you look at the prayers, you'll see them praying the scriptures. And so when you pray the scriptures, what you're doing is you're saying, God, you said. I've got an impossible situation here. I don't know what I'm going to do, but you say it. You are God of the impossible. You said it to Abraham in Genesis. You said it in Jeremiah. Uh, our Lord God, uh, who made the heavens with your, uh, your, your outstretched arm and so on, nothing is too hard for you. Jesus said to the disciples, with, with God, nothing is impossible. Your word said. That you are a God of the impossible. Your word says that you, 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 you delight in things that seem to be impossible. And so you hold up the word of God. Uh, you, your word said weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That's what you said. Yo, what you said, uh, uh, be, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Jesus Christ. You say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He shall direct you. You say, oh, I'd like to stay there a little while longer. But you got to, you, you know, you, you just hold up the word and you, you just tell God what he said. And you know what? Faith is really standing on the promises of God. Uh, Romans chapter 4. Uh, Abraham was fully persuaded that what God said he was able to perform. And so you, 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 uh, faith is not a blind leap into the dark, but it's standing in the dark on the word of God, you see. And so pray the scriptures. You know, when you confess, uh, Lord, I confess. You said, seek first the kingdom. I haven't been doing that. I confess. Uh, you said that I'm, I'm to love even my enemies and to pray for them. I haven't been doing that. Uh, and, and forgive me. Uh, you said if I have something against somebody, I'm to seek reconciliation. If they have something against me, I'm to seek reconciliation. You said. And so you tell, you, 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 you pray the scriptures. Uh, you said uh, that, I, that we're to make disciples. Uh, just tell, you said. And so you, you pray the scriptures. And then the next thing is he he, he, he emphasizes the sovereignty of God. He emphasizes the sovereignty of God. Uh, look again at, uh, at, verses, uh, at verses 6 and 7. Well, your verse 6. And said, he's praying to God now, O Lord of our fathers, art now thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to uh, withstand thee? Art not, verse 7, art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to thy seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? And, uh, and so on. And he goes on, because he's praying the scriptures now in verse 9. Uh, if when evil cometh up upon us as the sword, that's, that's war, judgment, or pestilence, uh, the bear, pandemics, or famine, 
and uh, we stand before this house. Your word says that if we have a problem, famine, whatever, if we stand before this house or in this house or if we're in a foreign land, if we look to this house, your word said that you will hear and that you will heal. And uh, I'm just asking you to do what you said. You hold up the word to him. And notice he says, uh, you, you, you're sovereign over the, the kingdoms. Do you know that God is sovereign over rulers? Please read Daniel chapter 4. You, you must read Daniel chapter 4. Uh, and Nebuchadnezzar was lifted up in pride and, and, and Daniel pleaded with him, man, humble yourself. Uh, stop sinning and be merciful to the poor. And uh, 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 your, your peace may be extended. He just pleaded. Read Daniel chapter 4. And uh, in Daniel chapter 4, uh, Nebuchadnezzar stood up one, uh, one day and he says, you know, it, it's not this great Babylon. I made Babylon great. Did, did I not? I made Babylon great. And, uh, and the Bible says that uh, you, you, you're going to go out now and you're, gonna, you, you're going to live like an animal for seven years until you get some sense. Until you know that the heavens do rule. And for seven years, read Daniel chapter 4. He, he lived like an animal. And you know what he said in verse 35? He says, mm, and all, all the inhabitants of the earth are regarded as nothing. And you do according to your will. And the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, none can stay your hand or say to you, what are you doing? And those that walk in pride, you're able to abase. Oh, read it. He's sovereign over rulers. And you know what God said to a Pharaoh? Pharaoh in uh, Pharaoh, some say Pharaoh. It can be pronounced both ways. But in Exodus chapter 9, verse 10, Romans chapter 9, verse 17, God said, I raised you up. This is what he said to, to Pharaoh. I raised you up to put my power on display. I raise you up, to, to, in other words, for my glory. And, and uh, 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 remember in uh, Exodus chapter 14, sometimes God will arrange things just to put his power on display. He had Moses to lead the people to the Red Sea where there was no way out. And he told Moses, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart and he's going to come after you and I'm going to get glory today. I'm going to put my power on display. And sometimes God will just arrange things to put his power on display. He's a great God, none greater, has all power, all wisdom, all knowledge. And he's still running things. And then Pilate, in John chapter 19, verse 11, Jesus said to Pilate, you could have no power at all against me eh, unless it were given to you uh, from above. God is sovereign over the animal kingdom. In Numbers chapter 22, verse 28, he made Balaam's donkey talk. And you know what's so interesting? The prophet talked back to the donkey. And the prophet said to the donkey, if I had a sword, I'd kill you. <laughs> I mean, I read that, Numbers 22. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the thing, that, the, the thing that's, that's so interesting here is not that the donkey talked, but the prophet talked back to him. There's a lot of humor in the Bible. <laughs> God is sovereign over the animal kingdom. Ask Daniel. Read Daniel chapter 6. Spent a night with a group of with hungry lions. The, the, the lions were not on a fast. And uh, J. Mon Vernon McGree said that uh, one of the uh, liberals said that uh, the lions didn't eat Daniel because they didn't have any teeth. And Dr. McGee said, listen, if the lion, listen, in that situation, if they didn't have any teeth, they would have gummed him to death. Because, and we know that the lions were hungry, that they weren't on a fast, because when the enemies of Daniel were thrown into the den, the Bible says the lions devoured them before their bodies hit the ground. But for Daniel, Daniel said, the Lord, he sent his angels. Shut the lion's mouth and I have no hurt. That's what he said to the king the next day. Oh, king, live forever. Had a good night. What about yourself? God is sovereign over the animal kingdom. And then you know what? In Exodus chapter 11, Exodus chapter 11, God said that... Uh, uh, all the firstborn uh, in Egypt 
are going to die except those who are in the house where the blood has been applied. And he says there's, there's going to be death throughout Egypt and there's going to be wailing, weeping and wailing throughout the land of Egypt. But in Goshen, in Goshen where God's people were, God said not even a dog will bark against his people. And do you know, did you know that, that, that all of the roosters in Jerusalem were silent until after Peter denied Jesus three times. All the roosters, in, not one of them could crow. God is sovereign. And you know what, listen, in the book of Jonah, chapter four, God sovereign over worms. Oh man, a God that's sovereign over worms? Oh, I know he can take care of me. God is sovereign over worms. Jonah chapter four, Jonah chapter four, and also Amos chapter four. He's sovereign over worms. And then, you know, he's, he's sovereign over the ravens. Uh, First Kings uh, chapter 17, God commanded the ravens to feed Elijah two meals a day by the brook. Sovereign over winds. Exodus, he took an east wind and divided the waters of the Red Sea, fanned the bottom dry. And his people went across on dry ground. And then, and then in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19 uh, at Mount Horeb, and we were there, 2018, 2018 I believe it was, is that right, 2018? We were there at Mount Horeb in Mount Sinai, July 2018. And, and God's, uh, God was just passing by, you know, he was readjusting the focus of Elijah. And the Bible says that uh, God passed by and there was a, uh, there was a wind and there was a, 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 a fire, an earthquake and a fire. But here's the thing about the wind. The wind was so strong that it broke rocks in pieces. Now, there has never been, never will be a, a wind that's stronger than that. But what I want us to understand is that God is sovereign over the strongest wind that is possible. God is sovereign over it. And in Jonah chapter 1, the Bible says God sent out a wind. And on the Sea of Galilee, Mark chapter 4, Jesus got up and said to the wind, peace be still. He's sovereign over wind. He's sovereign over the fires. Sovereign over fires. Uh, he led his people with a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. Daniel chapter 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were put into the fiery furnace. God took the heat out of the fire. He's sovereign over fires. Oh, I can go on and on and on and tell you the things that he's sovereign over, but you know, what? how do I know that he's sovereign? And I have no doubt today that God is sovereign. None whatsoever. Over 45 years ago, I was standing on the corner of 3rd and Center Street in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I was discouraged and I was carrying on a conversation with myself as I was waiting for a bus and I said, I'm not gonna preach another sermon. People do what they wanna do, they don't change, they don't listen. Preaching is a waste of time. I'm going to serve God as a social worker. That's how I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to preach anymore. And as I was standing there talking to myself, a lady came up and tapped me on my shoulder and she said, are you Reverend Malone? I said, yes. She said, my brother was heavily into drugs on the east side of Milwaukee. His life was a mess. He heard you preach on the east side of Milwaukee and his life has changed. He's a different person. He's turned around. Please keep preaching. That has been over 45 years ago. And do you know from that day to this, I have never, never considered not preaching. And you know, Jeremiah said on one occasion, uh, you know, he, would, he preached for 40 years and the people didn't change. 
In fact, they, they mocked him and put him in prison. They, uh, they abused him. And one day Jeremiah said, I'm, I'm not going to preach anymore. But then he said, I was weary with forbearing. His word became as a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. And although nobody's changing and they're abusing me, I got to tell the story. Nineteen ninety one. I was one of the speakers at an annual Sovereign Grace Conference that was hosted by the late DJ Ward, Dennis Ward, brother of Brother Oscar Johnson. And for a number of years, I was one of the speakers. Uh, the conference started on Monday. They would have a musical. And then from Tuesday through Friday, uh, there would be speakers in the morning, in the afternoon, and, and at night. And I was usually one of the morning speakers. In fact, of all the years that I attended the conference, I, I spoke only once at night. It was usually... Uh, in the morning or afternoon and of course I preferred the morning because usually people were sleepy in the afternoon <laughs> after uh, after a meal but anyway my wife and I we we were there for a week uh, we returned home and uh, the Monday after we returned home again the conference ended on a Friday we returned home and then on a Monday we were living on uh, 90, 90th Street. But anyway, I took my walk. I walk usually almost every day. I take a walk up to Bradley Road. And I took my walk. And my wife and my mother-in-law were outside working with some plants. And uh, I returned from the walk, and my study was right across from our bedroom. And as soon as I got into my study and sat down, I heard a noise in the bedroom. And what had happened is that this extension cord disintegrated. I still have it. And if you have an extension cord like this that's constantly drawing power, it's a fire hazard. And so you need to immediately change that. It's dangerous. Uh, because in this extension cord, oh, it was a number of years. Uh, it was just, it was a clock radio. And so the clock was constantly going. It didn't require that much power, but over, over years, a period of time, it, you know, it disintegrated, and this, this, this extension cord disintegrated, and it started a fire on the carpet, and I heard the frying noise, and I was able to run over and stamp out the fire before it did any serious damage. And I looked for God in everything. And so I sat on the side of our bed, and I said, Lord, I know you're saying something to me. What are you saying to me? And, and, and when I say that God spoke to me, what I mean is that I got an impression, strong impression. And you, you, there, there, there are three sources of impressions. So let me point this out. Every time you get an impression, it's not always from God. In fact, most of the time, it's probably not. You may have ate too much pizza. Um, but there, there are three spirits that influence us. There is the human spirit. Sometimes we get impressions, and it's simply the human spirit. And then there is the demonic spirit. Sometimes we get impressions, and they're from the devil. You'd be amazed at how many times people have come to my office and to the office of Pastor Hopgood and said, 
uh, I'm getting a divorce from my husband because the Lord wants me to be happy and the Lord told me. I mean, the things that people come and say the Lord told them. God says he hates divorce. And so when they come and say, now there are legitimate reasons, of course, for divorce. Don't misunderstand me. There are biblical reasons for it. But you'd be amazed at how many times people come and say the Lord told me. And it's crystal clear that it wasn't the Lord. It was the devil because what they're saying is contrary to the word of God. God is never going to tell you something that's contrary or contradicts his word. And this is why it's important that we, that we know the word of God. And so we'll be able to discern the spirits. And of course the other impression is from the Holy Spirit. And I said, Lord, what are you saying to me? And the Lord said to me, just as clear, he says, you know, you have been preaching that I'm sovereign, that I'm in control. And I just want you to know that you haven't been lying about me. I am sovereign. I am in control, you see. Oh, I could go on and on with illustrations. But he's sovereign. He's sovereign. And again... This is one of the takeaways is, is when, you, when, you, when you, this is how you pray when you have a situation. You can't see your way out. You can't see how you're going to make it. You start with the sovereignty of God before you even mention the problem. And you pray the scriptures. God, you said. You said. And you know, to pray the scriptures, we have to read memorize and meditate on the scriptures if you're going to pray the script you got to know the scriptures you, you can't pray script, the scriptures if you don't know them and like and a, and a lot of these crazy things that people say god told them if they knew the scriptures they would know that that wasn't god that that gave them that impression and so we've got to know we got to know the scripture meditate on the scriptures if we're going to pray the scriptures and joshua 1 8 says this book not a book on this book, but this book. Because the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. Blessed is the man or woman that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his or her delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he or she meditates day and night. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Pasag rafe tepnustas. All scriptures are given by inspiration of God and are profitable for doctrine didaskalia, teaching, instructions in righteousness, and so on. That the anthropos, the man or woman of God, may be perfect. What do you add to something that is perfect? Fully equipped. What do you add to something that's fully equipped? You know, some people spend more time reading newspapers than they do reading the Bible. And many read books on the Bible more than the Bible. You know, God spoke to me again, you know, many times and said, you know, uh, if you come to me, the fountain, uh, you know, I'll show you things. You know, you, you spend so much time trying to listen to what I said to somebody else, I can't talk to you. And the people that you're listening to, and I do listen to others, I, I listen for confirmation and so on, but, but sometimes you can, you can do too much of that. You can be so busy listening to what God said to somebody else that he can't talk to you. And God said to me, you know what? If what that person says, if it is profound, they got it from me. If what they said is profound, they got it from me. You can do what they did. Spend time with me and I'll show you things. You see. And you know, another thing we have to be careful too is, you know, you can, we can allow means to become ends. We can allow means to become ends. 
you see. Praise, for example, and I listen to praise music all the time. Um, sometimes, I, you know, I, I, I turn it off and listen to God, but, you know, the, the praise is to get you into the presence of God. And once you get there, it's time to worship. You, you worship once you get there, but you can, you, can worship, you can worship the means that got you there and never get around to worshiping. So we have to be careful. You can allow means to become. And by the way, prayer is a means to many of the ends that God has ordained. I hope you understand now why Starting this Wednesday, we're going to come together for one hour of just prayer and praise and worship. That's where the power is. Activating the power of God through fasting, prayer, worship, and praise. Let's pray. And Lord God, I do thank you for the vision regarding activating your power through fasting, prayer, worship, and praise. And now as we go forth, give us the grace to carry out the vision. Give us the grace to be obedient to the vision. You are God of all power. We can't make you do anything that you don't want to do. But we understand that prayer is a means to many of the ends that you have ordained. Prayer is a means to accomplishing many of the things that you want accomplished. Give us the grace, Lord, to go forward with prayer, fasting, worship, and praise. And now I pray for anyone who has not made peace with you through the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you would draw someone to yourself today. And if you're here and you've never trusted Jesus as the Lord and as the Savior of your life, pray these words to him. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm lost, that you're the only one who can save me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and that you rose again bodily from the dead. Today I want to receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. Give me the grace to repent. Give me the grace to believe. Give me the grace to receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. And I pray in your name. Amen. Life, we will go through storms. To help navigate through those storms, please read Pastor Malone's book, Going Through the Storms of Life. You may order your copy today by going to our website at newtchurch.org. The New Testament Church of Milwaukee is a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. If you enjoyed today's message and would like to view it again or view previous messages, please visit our website, newtchurch.org, or follow us on Facebook at New Testament Church of Milwaukee. To support our outreach, you can also go to newtchurch.org. May God bless you and keep you safe.